So they saved the crazy scientists for the last talk. I'm going to be talking about using polio as a cancer therapy. And so our group at the Preston Robert Tisch Brain Tumor Center at Duke University is using one of the most grim and feared pathogens of the past to target one of the most lethal diseases of today, that is cancer. Polio, of course, is responsible for causing the debilitating disease poliomyelitis, and it does so by infecting and killing motor neurons. Several epidemics, spanning from the late 1800s until the 1950s, made this virus infamous. In severe cases of polio, patients, many of which were children, necessitated the use of these iron lungs, pictured here on the left, which functioned as negative pressure ventilators to force air into their lungs. These iron lungs became a symbol for the grim and devastating effects of polio that ultimately inspired the world to find a cure. Fortunately, in the 1950s, two highly successful vaccines were produced and vaccination efforts were commenced that has made polio no longer a problem for much of our world. Interestingly, however, since the early days of molecular biology, it's been shown that polio is actually very good at killing cancer cells. And in fact, one of the original earliest studies looking at the growth of cancer cells in a laboratory setting found that polio was able to kill these cells. However, polio was never proposed as an anti-cancer therapy, largely because of its potential to cause polymyelitis. Serendipitously, however, my research mentor, Matthias Grohmeyer at Duke University, discovered that replacing part of the poliovirus genome with that of its much less scary cousin, rhinovirus, rendered this chimeric or mixed virus completely incapable of causing polio. And so here's a piece of that data demonstrating that neuron-like cells, which we are able to culture in a laboratory setting to mirror neurons or to mimic neurons compared to cancer cells. And when we add an increasing amount of virus, we can see that neuron-like cells are not harmed, but these cancer cells are. Importantly, we also tested this virus in primate models of polio, the same way that the vaccine strains were tested, and this virus did not cause poliomyelitis and was unable to cause any effects in these primates. It was this combination of neuroattenuation, or the lack of the ability of this virus to cause polio, combined with its cancer toxicity that inspired Matthias to develop this agent and to respond to a great need for new and innovative cancer therapies. He decided to use this tamed poliovirus to target one of the most untamed, untreatable cancers known to man, and that is glioblastoma multiforme, or GBM. GBM is stage four brain cancer. It is the most aggressive and most lethal brain cancer. Median survival for GBM is only about 14 months post-diagnosis. And unfortunately, following standard of care, which consists of chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation, patients' tumors invariably regrow. And following the regrowth of these tumors, patients only have about six to eight months left to live. And so importantly, our group has found that these glioblastoma cells are highly sensitive to killing by this chimeric poliovirus. And so that was part of the rationale that began a phase one clinical investigation for the usage of this poliovirus against GBM. And so, of course, a phase one clinical trial is designed to evaluate the safety of an agent. So we're looking at whether or not patients have side effects and if this agent is safe to administer. And so here on the top left, you can see a three-dimensional visualization that the surgeons use to implant a catheter into the side of the tumor. The virus is then slowly infused into the tumor. And what we've seen with this approach, after some 50 patients, approximately 50 patients, this approach seems to be safe. But most importantly and excitingly, we've seen several uncommon encouraging responses against this disease, including complete responses, which, are, which essentially are the tumor completely disappearing, which is very rare for this disease, including at doses where patients experience limited to no side effects. And so based upon these early findings in the phase one clinical trial, the FDA recently granted what is called breakthrough therapy designation, indicating the promise that this therapy has and the potential it has 
to treat, I should say, the potential that it has to treat patients um, and better outcome, achieve better outcomes for these patients. And so as scientists, we're, of course, interested in understanding how this works. Because if we can understand how this virus targets and eliminates cancer from people's bodies, then we can understand how to enhance it and make it work for more patients. And so from our in vitro studies, where we take glioblastoma cells and infect them with the virus, we know that the virus will eliminate and kill all of those cells in the dish. And so it's tempting to think that the virus in a human setting, in the tumor, would kill all of the cancer cells until there are no more alive. However, we found that this is not the case, but rather this picture is vastly more complex. And so some of the most compelling evidence that direct viral cell killing is not what explains these responses in patients actually comes from the types of responses that we see. So in the first type of response, what we see is that following infusion with polio, we actually see a swelling or growth of the tumor a couple of months after injection. We then see over the course of months, even on the scale of almost years, the tumors disappear. This is incompatible or inconsistent with what we would expect if the virus directly was doing this because you see that first the, the tumor swells and maybe grows, indicating inflammatory processes may be involved. And then also we know from our in vivo studies and animal models that the virus only sticks around for a couple of weeks. So we're seeing these responses take place over months long after the virus is gone. In the second response type, we see that these tumors just simply do not respond to treatment. They continue to grow um, several months after treatment. And at this stage, the clinicians decide to use chemotherapy in hopes of extending survival of these patients. Chemotherapy against recurrent glioblastoma essentially never, essentially never causes complete responses. Surprisingly, in this trial, we see several a few instances where treatment with chemotherapy after polio treatment of the tumor leads to a complete response, suggesting that even after, long after the virus is gone, the virus has had an impact on the tumor and somehow had an indirect effect to cause the tumor to respond to chemotherapy. And so to understand what might be happening, we must first understand the human immune system. The purpose of your immune system is to remove anything that does not belong, such as viruses and bacteria. So for example, during virus infection, your immune system has a number of mechanisms to sense the presence of a virus, including by recognizing viral proteins. Proteins, of course, are the functional element of viruses. It's actually what makes up the viruses, and it's what the virus uses to replicate. And your immune system, on the basis of recognizing these viral proteins, can eliminate infected cells without harming normal cells. Interestingly, decades of research has demonstrated that, in fact, the immune system can also recognize and kill cancer cells in a similar fashion. And so as many of you likely know, cancer is a disease caused by mutations. And these mutant genes become mutant proteins. And your immune system can recognize these mutant proteins. And on the basis of these mutant proteins, like a viral protein, the immune system can recognize a cancer cell and eliminate it. In fact, it is believed that your body produces cancer cells quite frequently, or more frequently than the disease cancer occurs, but yet your immune system eliminates these cells before they become a problem. Cancer as a disease, however, we know that the tumor cells or cancer cells have somehow found a way to prevent either the immune system from killing them or recognizing them. What we've discovered is that when we inject polio into the tumor, and this is largely from our animal model studies, when we inject polio into the tumor, we see infection and killing of some tumor cells. However, this is minimal, and what it actually serves to do is produce a number of inflammatory features that leads to an onslaught of several different types of immune cells into your tumor. And these immune cells, of course, as they are supposed to do, begin eliminating virally infected cells, much like any other virus infection. However, the immune system then becomes active in the site of the tumor due to the presence of the virus, and your immune system is then able to once again recognize and begin killing cancer cells again, even cancer cells that are not infected, and even after the virus is already eliminated from the tumor. And so this is an example of that from an animal study. Uh, these are two different tumors. I'm not sure how well this shows up on the projector, but essentially here we have a control-treated tumor and a polio, chimeric polio-treated tumor. 
And we're staining for an immune marker, immune cell marker, that recognizes a number of different immune cell types. And it shows up as brown. What you can see here is in the control-treated mice, there's very little brown staining. Whereas in the polio-treated mice, we see quite a bit of brown staining. We also see restructuring of the tumor in gaps and holes from where the combined effort of the virus and the immune system has killed cancer cells. We also see that this tumor, of course, does not grow, whereas the control tumors do. And so we're excited about identifying the molecular mechanisms by which the immune system is able to become active after addition of the virus and how your immune system then is able to target the cancer cells. But we're also excited at the same time about understanding how we can apply this, this virus to other cancer types. And so this is a simple experiment showing a breast cancer cell line and a prostate cancer cell line. And all we did was stain the cells with a dye that stains living cells. What you can see is after the course of 48 to 72 hours, polio kills both a breast cancer and a prostate cancer cell line. We've seen similar effects for a number of cell lines from pancreatic cancer, uh, lung cancer, melanoma, and also stomach cancer. And so we're excited about also applying this to other cancer types. Currently moving forward, we continue with our phase one clinical investigation to identify a dose that we are essentially happy with. And soon we hope to begin a multi-institutional trial wherein patients at, across different universities will be treated um, in close coordination with the FDA to evaluate the efficacy of, the, in this, of this approach in a large cohort. And so it is our hope at the Preston Robert Tisch Brain Tumor Center at Duke that cancer will be much less scary for future generations, just as polio is much less scary now. So thank you. Thank you.